While I had only just escaped the stronghold, I sensed that in time my journey would return me full circle to this place. Infiltrating the fortress, however, would be no small feat. The balcony that had provided my escape was now well beyond my reach, leaving this massive gateway as the only means of entry. The gates were sealed, but like the time-streaming chamber I had seen earlier, their operation was undoubtedly linked to that odd crystal mounted above the entrance. vampires had nothing in common with the deranged jackals I left behind in Cain's derelict empire. They seemed to retain much of their former humanity. In this era, vampires were clearly not the uncontested predators we had been. These creatures were hunted mercilessly and oppressed. And while I still believed that vampirism was a plague and had to be wiped out, there was nothing noble or righteous in this crusade. This was simply ruthless persecution. Pillars of Nosgoth, pristine, whole, and uncorrupted. 
I had never beheld them in this undefiled state. Yet something profound and indelible resonated within me at the sight. And there, waiting at the very heart of the pillars, was the canker that was destined to destroy them. I know you're there, Raziel. Mobius led me to you, Cain. Though I might have guessed you'd meet me here. And if Mobius told you I was hidden on the underside of hell, would you throw yourself into oblivion to pursue me? Mobius trawls for the ignorant and unwary, hauling his gasping prey from the streams of their destinies. Stay out of his net, Raziel. Spare me your elaborate metaphors, Cain. I have pursued you here for one purpose. You will pay for your betrayal, and balance will thus be restored to Nosgoth. And whose will is satisfied then? The will of Raziel or Mobius? Would I be better manipulated by you, Cain? Now, turn and face me. The chase is over. This isn't a chase, Raziel. We are merely passengers on the wheel of destiny, describing a perfect circle to this point. We've been brought here for a reason. I've seen the beginning and the end of our story, however, and the tale is crude and ill-conceived. We must rewrite the ending of it. You and I. Face me, Cain. Even you shouldn't die a coward's death. Isn't it customary to grant the condemned a final request? I recall no such courtesy from you. Indulge me, Raziel. All I ask is that you listen. This is the sublime moment of our undoing, Raziel. The ineffable fulcrum upon which swings the entirety of our history. This is where all of Nosgoth is betrayed. In this instant, Aria, the balance guardian, is murdered by dark forces bent on overthrowing the pillars. Her spirit is just now tearing free, lost in the ether, trying to find its way here. You have already seen how she comes to haunt these pillars. Found here by your refusal to die, you are the reason this land becomes diseased. As long as you remain alive, you condemn Nosgoth to an eternity of decay. Be still, Raziel. See this. As Ariel dies, I am being born to take her place as Balance Guardian. Such is my destiny. At the moment of my first cry, Ariel's beloved, the guardian Nupraptor, finds her corpse. Racked with grief and tormented by suspicions of treachery, Nupraptor plunges into a madness which overflows and infects all of the guardians who are symbiotically bound, including me. The repercussions of Ariel's assassination were expertly calculated. The entire circle descends into madness, and I am tainted at the moment of my birth, instantly rendered incapable of fulfilling the role destiny has prepared for me. Shall I show you the same mercy you showed the rest of the circle, then? You blithely murdered them to restore their pillars, yet your hand faltered when it came to the final sacrifice. What makes you exempt, Cain? You're merely the last man standing. Why condemn me for simply carrying out what you hadn't the courage to do yourself? Let's drop the moral posturing, shall we? We both know there's no altruism in this pursuit. Your reckless indignation led you here. I counted on it. There's no shame in it, Raziel. Revenge is motivation enough. At least it's honest. Hate me, but do it honestly. Thirty years hence, I am presented with a dilemma. Let's call it a two-sided coin. If the coin falls one way, I sacrifice myself and thus restore the pillars. But as the last surviving vampire in Nosgoth, this would mean the annihilation of our species. Mobius makes sure of that. If the coin lands on the reverse, 
I refuse the sacrifice and thus doom the pillars to an eternity of collapse. Either way, the game is rigged. We agree then that the pillars are crucial and must be restored. Yes, Raziel. And that's why we've come full circle to this place. So after all this, you make my case for me. To end this stalemate, you must die so that new guardians can be born. The pillars don't belong to them, Raziel. They belong to us. Your arrogance is boundless, Cain. <laughs> There's a third option. A monumental secret hidden in your very presence here. But it's a secret you have to discover for yourself. Unearth your destiny, Raziel. It's all laid out for you here. You said it yourself, Cain. There are only two sides to your coin. Apparently so. But suppose you throw a coin enough times. Suppose one day it lands on its edge. I didn't know what impulse stayed my hand, why I had so willingly allowed Cain to escape me when I had pursued him for so long. I had no reason to trust Cain after he had valued me so little, and yet I found myself intrigued by his words. I had been too cruelly used to so gullibly play his pawn, but if this world truly had secrets to divulge, I was determined to expose them. From the moment of my arrival, I had the constant and palpable sensation of being watched. Someone, it seemed, was keenly interested in my presence here.
From the look of it, this door had been sealed for centuries. I began to realize it was no mere coincidence that I found myself standing here, beneath this winged figure with blue skin and cloven hands so like my own, and bearing this unique key. And so it was with a sense of gravity and trepidation that I unsealed that ancient door and crossed the threshold. As I entered the chamber, I sensed that it had been sealed for hundreds, perhaps thousands of years. And while this room was clearly built when the pillars were erected, I knew that no human hand could have shaped this place, and that perhaps it had never been seen by human eyes. The surrounding murals depicted a winged race, their features so like my own, but beautiful, where mine were grotesque and angelic while mine were demonic. I tried to decipher these images. A great war, but with combatants like none I had ever seen. The pillars raised by this winged race who thus defeated their adversaries. The winged beings again, writhing in agony, apparently afflicted with the same bloodthirst I had so recently suffered. And throughout the chamber, inscribed everywhere, Images of the Reaver itself. Was this what Cain had urged me to discover? I wondered. Lies, Raziel. Do not be deceived. Ah, my ancient benefactor. And I dared to hope we had parted ways forever. Your silence was refreshing, but it lasted. No doubt you have a conveniently inexpressible reason for your presence here. Do not be insolent, Raziel. I am eternally present here and everywhere, now and always. I am the still center of the turning wheel, the hub of this world's destiny. But perhaps 
Not so omnipotent as you'd have me believe. Your hold on me appears to be tenuous. I no longer seem to need you. Yet I'm guessing you still need me. This impudence is unworthy of you, Raziel. Do not forget that you have a task to fulfill here. You are indebted to me. Indebted? You would have me show gratitude for a gift I didn't ask to be bestowed. Do you forget that you forced me to inhabit this vile carcass? I restored you to yourself, Raziel. It was Cain who destroyed you. The very enemy you've just let slip through your grasp. Do not fail me, my servant. I serve no one. Not you, not Cain, and not your lackey, Mobius. Mobius is my good servant. I have many. And if I tell Mobius that he's worshipping a giant squid, do you think his faith will falter? You have grown willful, Raziel. But beware. To embrace a serpent is to invite poison into your heart. Cain is a sinuous beast. He will seduce and deceive you. You pride yourself on your free will, yet you let that degenerate deter your resolve. I harbor no illusions about his integrity, nor anyone else's. In fact, I am beset by manipulation on all sides. I merely seek the truth. These are the fathomless truths, Raziel. The agony of birth and death and rebirth. This is the wheel of fate, the purifying cycle which sustains all life. Vampires are an abomination, a plague which leeches this land of its spiritual strength. They obstruct the flow of life and death. Their souls stagnate in their wretched corpses. But the wheel must turn. Death is inexorable and cannot be denied. Your destiny is irresistible, Raziel. You are my soul reaver, the scourge of the vampires, reaper of their apostate souls. Remain steadfast, end the vampire's parasitic curse, and restore Nazgoth. Cain's blood belongs on your hands. Cain indeed deserves to die, for condemning me to this repugnant form, but if and when I kill him, it will be for me alone to decide. Cain destroyed you without a flicker of remorse. He tore the soul from your noble corpse, and after you had served him faithfully for a thousand years, he discarded you in the abyss on a jealous whim. Remember your rage, Raziel. Let it guide your hand.